In our first panel, we will therefore discuss human rights in concrete terms in the everyday life, day life of older people. And we requested Mr. Fichte to take the floor. Unfortunately, he fell ill and uh, we have someone to sit in. Mr. Michalski will sit in for him and he'll take the floor later. But first of all, I'd like to request Mrs. Birnbaum to take the floor for help age and welcome us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mollenkopf. Thank you for your introductory speech. I would like to welcome everybody, ladies, gentlemen, participants, dear participants. I'm delighted to welcome you in Hanover, in Berlin. I'm based in uh, Schleswig-Holstein, in the northern federal state of Germany. So I'd like to welcome everybody. And Mrs. Mollenkopf already said it. I'd like to welcome you to the International Day of the 13th seniors or old people stay in uh, Germany and it's the first one actually the first international senior citizens day and we are all revealing cohesion between generations and societal groups and we're also standing in for solidarity and with this first international day we're also showing is beyond our um, national and municipal borders and to the world. And I'd like to thank Bagso for the joint organization of this first International Day on the German Senior Citizens Conference. We, Help Age Germany, let us let me just introduce who we are and what we're doing. Help Aid Germany is part of a major global network with around 160 organizations to in development cooperation and humanitarian aid in uh, the global era. And we're um, advocating the rights of older people um, and a life we're fostering a life without discrimination against age and um, poverty. It is um, nutrition, inclusion. And this is why today um, we will also talk about an old age pensioners assistance, the so-called catastrophe um, flight catastrophe, resilience, aid, and working on these three, six focuses, we reach out to around 10 million people and we're working in projects. And let me tell you also with the support of our German federal government. So our projects are fostered by financial resource, with financial resources of our federal German budget. Human rights, human rights in old age. This is exactly the fundamental part of our everyday work. And let me put it that way. It is our DNA. This is Help Age International and Germany's DNA. And this is why I'm so delighted that today we have three different panels and we'll have an exchange on exactly that. What do human rights mean in old age and uh, in how far am I involved and what can we do jointly in order to foster them? And last not least, I would also like to thank the panelists, the moderators and all supporters, the interpreters, the technical support, but also the colleagues um, from Help Age, from Buxo, who did their utmost to organize this conference and then also uh, translated it in the digital world. Without you, it would not have been possible. And now I'm looking forward to exciting impetus and vivid discussion. And I'd like to pass the floor back to Mrs. Mollenkopf, who will be our moderator for this morning. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Birnbaum, for your friendly words and I can just um, confirm that it was really quite an endeavor to shift to um, a digital conference and I'm I'm really delighted that it all works and I'm now happy to welcome Sylvia Bruns. 
Zivia Bruns, you're head of the Department of Social Matters and Integration of Hanover, of the city of Hanover, and we're looking forward to your welcome speech. Thank you very much, Dr. Mollenkopf. Uh, dear participants of the International Day at the 13th Senior Citizens Day on Human Rights in Old Age, first of all, I am head of Department for Social Matters and Integration, but 20 years ago, we um laid out our individual department on old age and senior citizens at a very early stage it was actually missing in my title and this is why i need to mention that separately because well german this is something particular this conference on human rights in old age focuses immediately on the requests globally to be uh, implemented and this con conference is of course subject to a lot of discussion and throughout the pandemic mrs molen you said it it was so important to see what happens to my human rights and to my care should i be in need of care because basically since the uh, general convention on human rights since 1948 they this is applicable to everybody and also old age so seniors are basically equal to others. It is weird that we have to somehow underline that, uh, but there is need to do it. However, there is a difference between theory and practice and request and reality. In fact, and you know that as experts and participants, there is a major need for regulation, legal regulation to protect senior citizens. In many countries, they are not socially secured. And when it comes to old age care, they're on their own. And what adds on is that older people in many countries are subject to violence and abuse, and there is no legal protection against that. Old age discrimination is also important when it comes to human rights for senior citizens. There are many facets and reaching from uh, credits for older people to um, career and uh, staying in your job up to stereotypes and prejudice about aging. And of course, I cannot enumerate everything, but I'd like to list some stereotypes. It is the um, leaving thinking, acting, people think we're unflexible. Such attributes or comparable attributes are usually allocated to senior citizens and the view to the generation 60 plus may be one of the reasons for which for over 10 years, there has been a discussion in the UN on a proper UN convention on fostering human rights in old age which is still on. Basically, this is a political and not only an academic subject of utmost importance because human rights will define demands to the state to, that have to be secured. The UN Human Rights Convention has, after um, discussions, requested uh, clear for clear action on the 48th um, convention on in October 2020. This resolution has been signed by Argentina, Slovenia, um, and has been adopted by almost all UN and EU member states. This resolution will incorporate protection to avoid violation um violence and guarantee education and participation in society and to protect health and care services the resolution also makes it clear that in particular senior citizens with handicaps or those with chronic diseases as well as those in need of care as well as their family are um highly impacted by the pandemic and this has shaped out inequalities and even created new ones the organizer the boxo um organizer of the german senior citizens day um on human rights in age would like to reveal that it's necessary to support this un resolution and appeal for uh, new measures thank you very much for that last not least it's about 
a joint global convention because only a global convention can secure universal human rights for older people on the backdrop of their specific situations in life. In the preamble of a global convention, we might also incorporate that the group of older people is heterogeneous and older people are not necessarily vulnerable and in need of care. The proposal to set up a, a world convention has been supported by many countries. And in this context, it is really positive uh, to uh, be considered as a positive thing that Michel Bachelet and the UN uh, General Secretary Antonio Guterres have required an obligatory instrument to protect old age human rights, in particular during the pandemic. So we're seeing some progress and in civil society organizations and many others, there is a consensus 10 years after establishing the open working group of the UN on uh, aging. Now we need to establish a world convention, which is also fostered by a current study of the High Commissioner for Aging of the UN. On this backdrop, BAXO um, has made so many endeavors on uh, this path, and we're really grateful for that. And BAXO needs to be supported with the Global Alliance for the Rights of Older People, the ARGA platform, and many others. I'd like to thank all the representatives of BAXO who um, have invested so much in order to enable exchange on the junior, Senior Citizens Day. The participants and the moderators, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'd like to thank you. Um, and quoting Dr. Molenkov, in the future we have to secure senior citizens' rights all over the world. Have I wish you nice discussions. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you, Mrs. Bruns, for your encouraging words. We'll definitely get back to them because I think we need your support, definitely. Thank you, with pleasure. Okay, and now we'll get further into the detail of our panel subject. Mr. Fichtner couldn't join. And this is why Wenzel Michalski is sitting in for him. So I'd like to welcome him. Mr. Since 2010, he's been the German director of Human Rights Watch, and he is in charge of communication and lobbying. And before he joined Human Rights Watch, he has worked as a journalist for 20 years. First of all, as an editor, for documentaries at um, the uh, public programs in Germany and then as head of edit editing at Pro7 and Z1, one of the leading German programs or two of the leading German programs. And he is also advocating um, German's voice on an international scale, German's voice should be heard. German's, vo German's voice, Germany's voice on human rights. Mr. Michalski, you've got the floor. Thank you. Mrs. Bruns has already mentioned it. Some things that I'll mention might repeat what she just said. However, I just to underline what she said, because the human rights of senior citizens are not sufficiently taken into account also within the community working on human rights. And sometimes you have just to repeat things like, for example, to um, shift people's awareness. Human Rights Watch has been working to foster human rights all over the globe that are applicable everywhere and to everybody and also to, to senior citizens. In the past years, we focused on four areas and we still hope to expand them. On the first time, it's the infringement of human rights of senior citizens in um, armed riots or conflicts. And then 
the rights of senior citizens who would like to live autonomously to have the right to stay at home in old age and to use services and fall back on a health service in one's own surroundings, so not necessarily living in old age pensioners' homes, and something that I call um, the chemical fixation. So in old age pens uh, pensioners' homes, people are in many cases administered chemical drugs to stay calm, but they should also have right, should they um, be refugees, to somehow join their families in this endeavor. So let me just give you some examples. And Dr. Molnko, please let me know once my time is up. So um, I can hurry up to sum up things, but I'll be brief anyway. So the rights of older people in um, armed conflicts. Let me just enumerate some countries where there are armed conflicts between were armed conflicts between 2015 and 2021. To just reveal in how many countries we have observed armed conflicts, and of course there are many more that we. Have. Um, not enumerating and that we have not examined, but we've realized that the infringement of senior citizens' rights in war, in the war between Armenia, Azerbaijan, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, in the Central African Republic, Ethiopia, Israel, Palestine, Mali, Mozambique, Niger, South Sudan, Syria, and Ukraine. So this demonstrates how largely expanded violence against older people is, on the one hand, by government, but also f from armed groups. People um, were killed, tortured, executed arbitrarily, arrested and treated in humiliating ways. There were um, also destruction of their property and they were kidnapped in the Central African Republic, for example. There was a refugee camp and close to that refugee camp, a gentleman called Yu Don settled because in the refugee camp, there was no food. He was 60 years old and he was blind. So one would not think that he was so old. We have to assume that I'm sorry, I can't understand. Someone was unmuted. <laughs> Let me continue. Mr. Dildon, 60 years old, blind, living close to a refugee camp, which was attacked by an armed group. They were also um, approaching Dr. Mr. Dildon's hut. He said, I'm 60 years old, I'm blind, I'm not your enemy, don't attack me. And instead of answering, they shot him. And this is actually what happens. And this is what we documented also in Syria. In Syria, fanatic groups um, filmed each other while executing senior citizens. And the right of older people to human rights, but also to live autonomously and independently is infringed or neglected in many areas. Like for example, in Russia. In Russia, the, we this, uh, have a document of an 83 year old lady with a broken leg and she was prone to bed ever since twice a week at least, 
she had a visitor of a caretaker who tidied up the flat and made something to eat, but she was prone to bed. Nobody helped her. Nobody gave her the possibility to have a bath, meaning this is an example of how um, lack of care can humiliate uh, people's dignity. Another lady was suffering from a heart attack. She wasn't looked after. She was living in um, precarious um, living conditions. She couldn't move. She couldn't light up her own fire. And this is why he was forced to go to a caretaking uh, institution. And these were examples where older citizens could no longer live a life that was um, self-determined or uh, help them to go into rehabilitation. In, you, in the US and Australia, we've seen that many older people go to old age pensioners and are calmed um, with chemical drugs. So um, there is a lack of caretakers and to simplify their lives, older people um, are treated with drugs in Australia, for example, that are not even legal in Australia. I mean, you, ca you can't get them on a prescription basis, meaning these are antipsychotic drugs. These are antidepressants to somehow calm people. And I do recall that my uh, grand, great aunt who uh, lived in the UK in the 70s in an old age pensioner's home, and only my uncle who looked after her could stop this process. And the right of older people to family life or private life is also infringed in many cases. In view of refugees, for example, I've experienced that on my own in 2016, when so many Syrians and Afghans came to Europe. I uh, was in Lesbos and Kiosk, Kiosk in the refugee camp, and I talked to a family and the grandmother in this family couldn't even request for asylum because according to uh, German or European asylum law, she wasn't part of the core family. The core family disrespects the relationship among individuals because a young Syrian may have a much closer relationship than to his mother or maybe parents have died in war. So his contact person could be grandma or vice versa. And this is somehow neglected. We've also experienced that in our discussions um, with refugees from Afghanistan. Here, government says that a core family is a, a husband and a wife taking along their children up to the age of 18, not when they're beyond that age and grandma, grandpa are just not part of it, meaning they don't have any right to escape. And in refugee camps in Greece, we have incredible situations that older people are confronted with. The old lady couldn't go to the restroom or the bathroom, so the hygiene uh, hygienic situation was just um, entirely neglected and they were living as in prison, but there was no staff looking after them. So there were some people who somehow controlled the exits, but there was nobody looking after the security of senior citizens, but also of women and children within the camp. And by the way, the old lady, um, she was very... Um, fragile. She was around 80 years old. But of course, when they are four or five, they start working. And she was 48, sorry, 48. But she um, looked like 88. And it was 
so sad to see it was heartbreaking to see how she had lived so i'll just have a break now and then uh, i would like to thank you for your questions well in regards to the questions i would like to have those later because we'll first have our panel now but thank you very much for those insights of very specific situations so that we know what we can expect in those situations of war and armed conflict, but also in industrialized countries where the rights of older persons are being infringed and where people are not being treated in a dignified way. Thank you very much. We'll listen to you again during the panel. So I would suggest that we now first start with the contribution by Smart Daniel, and then we'll hear your presentation after the first two presentations. So just so you know, you can choose between English and German. If you go to the button of your screen, you'll find a little globe symbol. And if you would like to ask a question or send us a comment, you can put those in the chat. And then later we'll have a round for questions and answers. Now, Smart Daniel is the national director of the Help Aid program in Tanzania. He is a master of science and community development and for more than 20 years he's been working in different functions for and with older persons, mainly in Africa. He participated in strategic discussions with government representatives and non-governmental representatives in and inside and outside of Africa. Now, you can also uh, find those uh, short profiles of our speakers in the chat. And after that, we'll hear Tatiana Sorokan. She is the National Director of Help H in Moldova. And she's been a political scientist for many years, and she has uh, co-shaped the political landscape in this country. And she's worked with many different stakeholders and local organizations. She's uh, also a strong advocate of human rights. So first we'll have Smart Daniel. Welcome, it's great to have you here, be it virtually, and we look forward to your report on Tanzania. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, made it all, so I don't want to repeat myself. But uh, first of all, let me register my appreciation for uh, being uh, honored really to participate in the commemoration of uh, Germany's Senior Citizen Day. Uh, I cannot take this for granted uh, because uh, for me, I think it's uh, just a privilege. So thank you uh, so much for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Okay, can uh, someone uh, um, display my presentation, please? Uh, uh, okay, thank you. I've been uh, asked to discuss about the human rights and what does that actually mean even in old age? So that's what I will be talking about. Uh, next. Next, please. Yeah, we all know that uh, when you talk of uh, human rights, uh, we are referring to the basic right that uh, all the human beings can enjoy no matter where they live, 
what they do and how they behave. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we all know and we all agree that uh, older person are also human being. And according to you, uh, UN, uh, when you talk of an older person, you will be referring to human being whose age is above or is from 60 and above. And of course, in terms of number, currently we are talking of uh, almost 1 billion uh, uh, people who are above uh, 60 years. And the projection indicated that uh, uh, by 2050, we will be having uh, almost 2 billion uh, people uh, whose age will be above uh, 60. And by then, they will be constituting almost 21% of the world population. Next, please. Next, please. OK, yeah, I think uh, we have heard from Srivi and the other speaker that there are different initiatives which have been done at a different level uh, to ensure that older people are enjoying uh, human rights. Uh, so before dwelling into uh, the, 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 the challenge which older people are facing, uh, uh, I think it is important for all of us to acknowledge, as Srivia said, I think she also mentioned something in her opening remarks, some of the initiatives which are happening in different parts of the world. But uh, I can probably complement that by also uh, mentioning some of the effort which happened, for instance, the UN principle in um, uh, UN principle of older person that was adopted by the nation assemblies by uh, in uh, 1991. We have Madrid International Plan of Action. We have uh, also uh, various uh, region and uh, and uh, and uh, national initiative. Uh, you know, as you know, in different countries they have also. Uh, some of the countries they have uh, they have some registration which are focusing on uh, ensuring that older people are getting their rights, and uh, of course at different uh, regional level we are also having different policy and framework uh, which are also um, aiming at um, um, ensuring that older people are accessing their rights. Uh, but as it was mentioned, I think we still have a huge gap in terms of uh, having the UN Convention on the right of uh, older people. And uh, uh, for me, I think uh, it's really a shame because as far as I know, uh, uh, we, uh, this world has um, even managed to establish a specific international instrument to protect the right of animals, you know, but uh, we are yet really to have a UN convention on the right of older people. And I, for me, I take that as really a shame. So I think we really need to push for that. Next, please. So let's now uh, talk about the reality which older people are facing. Yeah, majority of older people are really struggling to access uh, quality health and uh, care service, particularly in the, develop, uh, in the developing countries. And we are also having a very big challenge um, at the workplace where older people are being denied a promotion opportunity and uh, even the, uh, the, the chance uh, of being uh, recruited uh, during the hiring process is really very minimum for the older people. You will see some advertisements which are, are categorically mentioning the age. If you are above uh, 60, then you don't qualify. We think that is not really a good uh, 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 um, issue. So that really needed to be addressed. We are also experiencing a lot of uh, uh, poverty among majority of the older people, and that is also affecting their right to make a decision. Less than 20% of the older people, particularly in the low uh, uh, income countries, uh, they are accessing uh, pension. Uh, for Tanzania, it's actually the situation is really worse because uh, only 7% of the older people uh, accessing a uh, pension. So you can imagine 93% of the older people, they don't have access to any pension when they 
uh, at advanced age. Uh, but we're also having a very big problem in terms of uh, abuse. Uh, and uh, for a country like ours, it's really a shame because a good number of older people are being killed because they are suspected to be witch, uh, uh, to be witch, you know, because they have red eyes. So we are still really facing, uh, apart from the normal abuse, for instance, confiscating of their property, but uh, we are also having physical butchering of the older people in the country just because they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, uh, they are accused to be a uh, witch. They are still denied uh, of their access uh, to, 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 to justice. And uh, of course, ageism is actually dominant in all spheres of their life. Next, please. Yeah, so we are talking about human rights. And as uh, I've already mentioned, we, we understand that there are certain uh, uh, initiatives which have already been done. But uh, all in all, if you visit an older person, let's say in my place of domicile, in one of the villages in Tanzania, uh older person you know what did they want to see when you talk of the of the of the uh, human right they wanted to see for them is uh, accessing quality health care and they have a basic need that's will be number one uh things like shelter uh for people with a disability i mean older people with a disability they will be talking of assistive device and specialized the care of uh, these are not available uh, we are also having the big problem in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, accessing uh, 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 their freedom from discrimination and abuse, as I've already mentioned. But uh, also, they are, they, are, they are struggling really to have an opportunity uh, to work, as I've already explained. Majority of the Tanzanian, I mean, uh, old uh, Tanzanian, including older people, they are depending on uh, agriculture. But uh, you can imagine, you know, um, uh, the environment is not that all conducive for them really to continue to engage with the agriculture. Some of their uh, property, like uh, their, 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 their property are being confiscated uh, by these smart guys, but, you know, uh, because they cannot really defend themselves. Uh, they, they end up losing their property which they created when they were still young. But also the freedom of expression is quite a big issue for them. And uh, they really need uh, uh, to have an opportunity for that. Uh, and of course, when I'm talking of freedom of expression, it's actually starting from the house, their, or their, their homestead, uh, to the uh, village, you know, probably to the award, and probably to, uh, uh, to, the, to the entire society. The opportunity which they are having really to express their view is really very limited. And uh, yeah, uh, from from the if you had an opportunity probably to access, uh, I mean to lead the help age strategy of from 2030. Uh, actually, the way human rights could be translated in the eyes of older people were actually summarized in the three dimension: enjoying well-being treated with the dignity and their voice being heard. From the consultation which we did, that's what actually uh, came up quite strong uh, when we were preparing the strategy that these are the things which older people want to see. Uh, next, please. Next. Next, please. Hello? Next, please. Hello? Hello, next, please. Kamla, Kamla, can you please wait schalten? Kamla, please go to the next slide. Can I, can I continue if uh, is facing a, a problem? Yes, please, go to, ahead. To move the... Yeah, now, if this is the reality, uh, because, uh, yeah, because my time is not really enough, uh, probably I can go straight to what we think could be yeah. uh, the recommendation. Yes. The, we think from where I sit uh, and uh, based on our experience, we think it would be really important to have for the country to have the program 
uh, that will address the need of older people and uh, which will uh, which will also help to protect uh, their human rights. And the other things which we think will be important, as I've already mentioned, I think it is important really uh, to continue to campaign for the adoption of UN Convention on the right of all the people. We think that will be really important. And uh, of course, as um, uh, other people mentioned, and I also uh, mentioned that in my uh, previous slide, that uh, there are certain um, uh, uh, protocol or instruments at regional level, for instance, in Africa, we are talking of a EU protocol uh, on uh, the right of older person, but very few countries, you know, are actually out of 54 countries, for instance, in Africa, only four countries have already ratified this kind of uh, uh, protocol, which are protecting all the people, right? So I think there is really a need to ensure that these countries are uh, 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 domesticating this, you know, more country, moving from four country to 54, that means 50 uh, country are yet uh, to ratify uh, the AU protocol. And I think similar situation is happening for other instruments in different regions. But the other, the other important things which we also, um, uh, we feel will help is to, um, to support all the people themselves so that they can continue, they can be empowered to continue really to advocate for their rights and their entitlement. We think that will be important. And also the uh, legal aid to older people and encourage the participation of older people in the decision-making bodies. We think that will really be important because uh, if we want their voice to be heard, then they should be represented in the decision-making body. Let me finalize my, 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 my input in this uh, discussion uh, by probably referring to the, uh, can you move, uh, can you move to, uh, move to another slide, please? Yeah, if you are facing problem, then I can continue. I'm saying, yeah. let me finalize by probably referring to the very important uh, statement, which was made by uh, the Archbishop Tutu. Uh, he said, as we get older, our rights do not change. As we get older, we are, we are no less human and it should not become invisible. Rest your hands to ensure good service and the access to justice for older people. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Vielen Dank, Smart. Vielen Thank Dank. you very much, Smart. Thank you very much for those insights to the situation of older persons in Tanzania. Now, it's, it's almost impossible for us to imagine that situation. I was thinking, what would happen if in our country 80% of older persons wouldn't get any pension or support? It's unbelievable. And I think that's where we need to think outside the box and feel outside the box and show our solidarity. Thank you very much. Now, this brings me to Tatiana. Thank Welcome, you. Tatiana. We look forward to your presentation from Moldova. Thank you very much, Ms. Molenkop. Uh, thank you for introducing me. It's uh, uh, really nice to be here, and I would like to thank you uh, for the invitation to present our work at this important meeting. It's a wonderful event, uh, and uh, I'm glad to, to have this opportunity to share our experience. Um, I'm going to speak today about how we deliver our rights work in Moldova with HelpAge International, with local partners, and uh, all the people. And if it is all right, can we please put on uh, the presentation, uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Mr. Komla?
while the presentation is uh, uh, getting on, I would like to say that uh, Halpage International in Moldova um, works uh, since 2005 and uh, has a, a mandate to promote and protect the rights of all the people. Uh, we work with and for all the people uh, in the areas of social protection, health, active aging, violence, abuse, and neglect. We uh, have new programs this year in the area of digitalization uh, and all the persons, and uh, uh, we work um, in the area of violence, abuse, and neglect. Uh, we also do policy analysis, advocacy, and influencing. So just to start, and because my presentation is uh, on now, can we, uh, uh, so uh, uh, it is, uh, I'm going to speak about delivering the rights work uh, in our program in Moldova. Can we go to the next slide, please? So just to start, I would like to say that uh, uh, just a glimpse of the situation uh, in Moldova. It's a very small country, as you can see from the uh, statistics on the slide of the population is 2.559 million. Uh, all the people represent 22.5%. Uh, uh, apart from being a very small country, Moldova is uh, shrinking uh, uh, and annually loses the, uh, its population. We uh, lose about seven, uh, 37 uh, thousand persons. That is equal to five Moldovan villages. Uh, and this is a lot, of course. Um, with all that, uh, being a small country, Moldova is not living very well. It is considered one of the poorest countries in Europe. The older people on minimum pensions have only 65% of coverage of the subsistence, minimum subsistence level. Uh, also, every second older person appreciates his health as bad or very bad and has at least one chronic condition, while life expectancy of older people uh, on average is about 71.4 years and women live at, on average eight years longer than men. The next slide, please. <clears throat> Apart from having these uh, limitations, uh, uh, Mr. Komla, can we please proceed to the next slide? Um, we also know from the statistics that 60% uh, of all the persons in Moldova consider their rights to be systemically violated. And the most violated rights are the right to social protection and health. If you move the slide, then you will see also the quotes from the older people. Uh, uh, we work with all the people, as I mentioned, and we uh, speak to them uh, on almost daily basis. Uh, and all the people confess that uh, uh, in older age, they need to be in good health. First of all, they need health and need something to live on, a pension, of course, but also uh, not to remain alone. Uh, and an older woman of 68 told us that uh, I think that when you reach an old age, the most painful thing to realize is that no one needs you. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, conscious of uh, uh, the context in Moldova and the situation of the older persons, um, the next uh, slide, please. Uh, um, so we uh, deliver our work through the rights-based approach um, that is uh, 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 embedding is in the universal norms and standards of the human rights system. And we believe that uh, poverty, injustice, exclusion of all the persons are never simply the fault of the individual, nor can the solution be purely personal. We therefore uh, look for solutions in the rights framework of all the persons. And our principle is that rights do not change with age. All the people have the same rights as everybody else. Our work on rights is therefore built around three components, as you can see from the slide. We empower right holders, we build the capacity of duty bearers, and of course we base our work on the human rights standards. More specifically, under each of these components, uh, the activities are 
can you please proceed to the next slide, Mr. Komla? Uh, so, um, uh, under empowering uh, the duty bearers, our uh, activities are uh, on capacity building and awareness raising. Uh, we uh, inform all the people about their rights so that they can claim these rights. And uh, we work with all the people on campaigning and uh, we promote the voice of all the people through these campaigns uh, and age demands action and other campaigns can be an example. We also uh, created the council of all the people and the aging network, uh, uh, the platform on active aging uh, that speak on behalf of all the people. In terms of capacity building of the government, uh, we uh, uh, deliver uh, different trainings to the government government workers, but also we have a thought leadership role and we provide technical support to the government <clears throat> on different areas of all the people needs. And we have the convener role because we enable civil society and aging uh, networks to meet and uh, to meet with the government representatives and to come up with recommendations for improving the legal framework of all the people. We also work to support active role in uh, accountability and uh, together with the aging networks, with the platform on active aging, we do policy analysis and research. We provide recommendations on how to improve different policies, strategies, and action plans that are related to the older people. And we meet in advocacy meetings with the government. We uh, use also uh, the international human rights system in our work because we uh, uh, develop uh, reports for uh, existing international mechanisms as CEDAW, uh, uh, economic, uh, uh, International Convention on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, uh, special procedures, UPR procedures, etc. And we again come up with recommendations to the government. The next slide, Ms. Komla, please, uh, Mr. Komla, please. As I mentioned, we work with the older people uh, councils and the platform on active aging, and we provide, provide recommendations to the government on how to improve policies. And we have analyzed so far over 50 different policies in the areas of needs of all the people. And to give you an example of what we have achieved, for example, in the uh, national plan on active aging uh, that the government has developed, uh, uh, the older people are now a priority for government. This is now a separate group and that has a different actions directed to improve uh, uh, the visibility of rights of, uh, and rights of all the people. And so uh, the government has uh, uh, now an award for remarkable achievements of the older people. And they give this award uh, annually to all the people who have achieved some impressive uh, uh, results in their life. Uh, at 60 uh, and over. Uh, also, this government plan has <clears throat> uh, a special mini grant for uh, civil society and civil society develop different initiatives to support the realization of the rights of all the people. And we advocated for this and we can see it in the plan. All the people uh, uh, in the same plan uh, of pre-retirement age 55 plus, uh, and older can now receive training or retraining guidance on how they can get unemployment. And into other documents that I wanted to mention, for example, the National uh, Plan on Human Rights, the older people uh, uh, have now in, uh, uh, increased, have been increased uh, the minimum pension uh, that now <coughs> reaches uh, <coughs> a little bit better the minimum subsistence. Uh, all the people in need of care can now apply for the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for the minimum package of the social services and can receive social services. All the people now are a separate group on their health insurance package and uh, a, a number of subsidized medicines are particularly designed for all the people. In the national strategy, Moldova 2030, all the people now are a target group under each of the areas of the strategies. And there is a commitment to reduce poverty of all the people by 50% through the Moldova 2030 strategy. Um, the next slide, please. <clears throat> so all these achievements that I have mentioned 
uh, we can see the, the, that these are results of our work because we have provided recommendations on how to improve the protection of the rights of all the people. And considering the fact that today uh, is a uh, Senior Citizens Day in Germany, I would like to say congratulations to all senior citizens on this important day and wish them uh, much health, uh, life accomplishments, and of course, happiness. And I thank you for this opportunity again. Mm -hmm. Ja, vielen herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much. In particular for the wishing well at the end of your speech. So very nice conclusion. Thank you. Unfortunately, we're almost approaching the end of panel one. However, I'd like to pass the floor to Mr. Michalski again. I would just request you to be brief. Thank you. Ah, thank you. I saw that there were three questions addressed to me in the chat, one asking for the rights of senior citizens in armed conflict in Afghanistan wasn't subject to our examination. This is why we are a small organization. May our Maybe our name suggests something major, but we are only 500 staff on the globe, so um, the few experts have to cover different countries and subjects. This is why we can't work comprehensively. In Afghanistan in the past years, there were severe security issues why we could just not enter the country in order to work on um, examining the implementation of human rights. And the second question, addressing the civil society activities that might be fostered in order to secure uh, senior citizens' rights. Well, we've got LGBT or uh, children rights um, that have been focused on, and I think we should be capable to reach that also when it comes to senior citizens. Why not? And another question on uh, the um, Dublin Convention on European Asylum Regimen and how it can be improved in order to protect vulnerable um, individuals in um, the core family to say 18 years and then it's cut off. This is arbitrarily. So what about, well, I'm 18 plus one day, then I've lost everything. So these age limits, such, such should some, somehow be applied in a flexible way and the core family is somehow addressed in a European attitude. Okay, when are you are old and vulnerable? Also, this is subject to different cultures. So uh, this Afghan lady who was 48 years old, but she looked like my parents that are much above 80. So that's different. And of course, the situations in families are different in different cultures. Should someone have a closer relationship with um, his grandma than uh, with his father, for example? So this is what I wanted to add. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for giving me the occasion to take the floor. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. So just a short question, Mr. Fokker. Are there any other questions in the chat that we could address? Yes. Mrs. Toma saying there is a study from the Tutling district with a protection concept for adults. And she also shared a link in the chat box. Then two questions, one on smart, one too smart. The African protocol that has been adopted was mentioned. And can we expect that in Africa, there will be one voice um, within the OWGH is a process to verify whether a universal convention on old age can be adopted. And Tatiana, a question to you. In the beginning of this year, the Green Paper on Aging was adopted. And what is the impact that you hope for for Moldavia, Moldavia or uh, where is need for improvement? Thank you. So I'd like to pass the floor to Smart, first of all. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, the AU protocol uh, for the people was um, 
agreed that uh, by the head of state in uh, 2016, and of course it is really a very good instrument, but it was supposed to be uh, domesticated by uh, member states within their own countries uh, so that it can uh, start to be operation. Unfortunately, as we speak, although the head of state are the ones actually who approved that, as we speak, out of 24, uh, 54 countries in Africa, only four countries as we speak. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame that even my country is yet to, uh, to, to, to ratify that one. So in a way, uh, although um, it has a very good uh, um, uh, article, which could really enforce implementation or adoption of the good registration in different countries for older people. But unfortunately, the speed of being ratified is really leaving us with a very big uh, challenge. So yeah. that's why we are saying that probably we really need to continue to push for that because we think if that will be accepted, then it will create a very good atmosphere for different countries to have uh, uh, good registration that will protect older people's rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vielen Dank. Yeah, and then Tatjana, wie sehen Sie die Rolle des Thanks, and Tatjana, what is the role of the Green Paper in Moldavia? Um, yes, that's a good question because uh, Moldova has now uh, is now probably more uh, or closer to uh, the European standards than, than ever uh, because we have uh, a new uh, government in place, we have a new parliament in place, and uh, we are uh, more open to adopt uh, and uh, ratify various international uh, treaties and norms. And uh, I think that Moldova. Uh, uh, it has not, uh, it, it is not part of the Green Paper yet, but it, it is going to, to review, it, review it and uh, actually take a position on this paper. But uh, we are very hopeful that, uh, uh, for example, in different other areas on the violence, abuse and neglect, Moldova just adopted, uh, just ratified the uh, uh, Council of Europe's Europe, uh, Istanbul Convention. And so we hope that this uh, will follow. Yeah, herzlichen Dank. Das zeigt uns auch, dass Europa größer ist als die EU. This reveals that uh, Europe is much wider than the European Union. And I'm really grateful um, for this remark. So this leads us to the end of this panel. It clearly showed what human rights mean to senior citizens, what they should mean to them, how they impact them, and it's important to advocate them much more than today. And for the end of this panel discussion, I don't know whether we can still ask it or do we have to close down. I would love to ask this question to uh, the speakers, to the three speakers. Do you believe that it would be useful and sufficient if the individual countries would foster and uh, clearly define and implement human rights, or do we really need a universal, a global human rights convention that is obligatory for senior citizens? What is your opinion? Maybe Smart first? Can you take the floor, Smart? Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, I think, uh, as I said, uh, we will still need uh, the uh, the another convention which will be binding, especially at the UN level. Uh, for me, I think that is really uh, important. Mm -hmm. I know that um, um, uh, for 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 the law and the policy, that's uh, the mandate of the of the uh, specific government. But I think we really need it of you and the convention that will push, will compel the country to adopt the law that will really protect the, uh, the right of uh, older people. So for me, I think that's what I can uh, I can say. And how does it look for you, Tatiana? And what about you, Tatiana? 
from uh, uh, the perspective of organization that I currently represent, Help Page International, uh, we also believe that uh, uh, the best way to uh, protect the rights of all the people is actually by adopting a new UN convention, uh, because the national legislation. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It also needs to to to. Uh, uh, actually follow uh, the international human rights norms and standards, and that can be achieved only through a new convention. The, the rights of all the people no. are now scattered through all different conventions, uh, and uh, the purpose of uh, a new UN convention is to put it in one single document and to have a more systemic and comprehensive protection of the rights of all the people. So, mm -hmm. Danke für diese Einschätzung. Thank you for your evaluation. And last but not least, Mr. Michalski, what is your opinion? At Human Rights Watch, we would also support this endeavor. I would like to um, agree with my preceding speakers. Um, to say a universal con convention is necessary and we could contribute um, to that by providing evidence um, with our documents uh, and research, but it's difficult to implement such a convention. I mean, when thinking of the Istanbul Convention, um, it was already difficult um, or um, adopting countries like the federal government of Germany are very slow because um, there is a legal department in um, the ministry, um, the foreign ministry, and they say we have laws that are much better than those in the convention. And this entails that, well, other countries say the Germans haven't signed, so we don't sign. So it's not easy to implement all that. but. It is just worthwhile to strive for it in order to um, foster the human rights of our senior citizens. Thank you. And thank you for falling back on your research documents. This is a great offer and we will definitely go back to it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, participants, listeners on your screens, this leads us to the end of our first panel of our international day. I would like to thank all the speakers. I'd like to thank all those who contributed to um, organizing this session. And I would like to request those who uh, were part of it to join the screen to take a group photo. We'll then have a break until 11 o'clock and at 11 o'clock we'll continue with the second part and then we'll focus on Europe and uh, what is going on in Europe.